But don't hit me no more. Kick in the door, wave in the four four. All you heard was Papa, don't hit me no more. Let's go. Kick in the door, wave in the four four. Hey, 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 yeah. We yeah, we uh we wanna thank you. Come here. Don't don't sit on the bed at night. No homo. No, just just don't get close to the bed. I should look like he fresh off the goddamn plane. I should just I should I should fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and I mean damn pause, but like just out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the frosted flakes. You know what I'm saying? Before force was invented. You know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the off of the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early. Now he's one of the richest stars in the world. And I'm yo, like, what, what the, the fuck did Puff, Puff just say? Nobody's gonna acknowledge this for me. Puff just said we used to wrestle. Hello User just released a podcast detailing all of Diddy's secrets and detailing Usher's experiences at Diddy's Flavor Camp. In it, he claims that weird women are all that exist. Doug's drinking and prejudice Usher has been exposed by Diddy to things you would die before witnessing a 14-year-old go through. He alleges that, you know, Diddy told him personally that he had sex with Usher. And when you look at the lawsuit, even though they got Usher name redacted, you could tell who it is because they describe him as the guy that performed at the Super Bowl. Right. So, I mean, we all know who that is, but how you feel about that, man? Well, I, I mentioned that earlier that he said uh, about Stevie J. The Usher part, that that's a touchy situation, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a certain feeling and I, I felt a certain way when Usher got on Shay Shay. And I don't mean, mean to mention other people platforms, but he got on Shay Shay and he mentioned how great and how good Puff taught him and everything. You know what I'm saying? about the business, right? I know, and people know, that was around that in that time that Puff and Usher had, did have a situation. And that situation led Usher to the hospital. Now I let Usher explain that to y'all. I let Usher tell that story. But how dare you say a man that groomed you, you gonna give him a pass. Bro, you know I know. Let me, re let, let me refrain you on something. Remember Usher? We was at the Swiss Hotel. Puff was, had Kim in the room. Had one of Keith Sweat's baby mothers in the, in, in the uh, the big room outside the master bedroom. He came outside in his robe. He came outside in his robe. She gave him a fellatio right there. His back was turned to me. She gave him a fellatio. You knocked on the door. I came and opened the door for you. Puff went in the room. You came in the room and kissed that girl dead in the mouth. Now I'm telling that because you take enough of somebody that you know and a lot of more people know didn't do you right when you was at Diddy Camp. Y'all put it together. And what you mean by Diddy Cal? Remember? He was on um, one of the talk shows. The white guy with the curly hair. What's his name? Um, the white guy with the curly hair. And he said, yo, would you send your son to Diddy Cal? And I just said, no, no. Ask him why he won't send him to Diddy Cal. But yet and still, you praise him. Damn, man, and you said that, I know you can't go into detail, but you said that um, it was a situation where Diddy sent him to the hospital? Let Usher explain that to you. Let Usher mama explain that to you. And the hospital was in Scarsdale, New York. The narrative of how Usher obtained the Super Bowl performance after spending the night with Diddy supposed reason for our actions, the reason you did it, money celebrity lady who wouldn't. Usher has become so adept at disguising his suffering from Diddy's camera that he ought to start peddling a 
A single little boy surrounded by gangsters, what would he have saw or experienced if he had witnessed Diddy beating Cassie? How would Diddy have behaved he's seen Diddy's strange side when it comes to men? Kim Porter, he's even seen the butt plugs, LOL. Now, let's hear the account from Gandil. Uh, first and foremost, um, I just want to say, I know a lot of people want to hear these stories and everything like that, because this is stuff that happened back in the day. And then maybe that if they knew there was going to ever be a YouTube or they knew there was going to ever be social media, uh, a lot of the stuff probably wouldn't have got played out like it did. But things happen and, and, and these are just stories from the past. I would like to use that as, uh, what you call that? Um, just, just, to, just to clear the facts of what's going on. But it all started, we was in Atlanta. And this story starts when I'm with Puff and he's in the exotic bookstores and he's doing shopping. Right, he's shopping, getting his stuff and everything like that. So, you know, this is the first time I was ever in an exotic bookstore with Puff. So, you know, I'm giving him his space. He's taking things off the shelves and stuff like that because they gave him a brown paper bag. When they gave him a brown paper bag, he was just putting stuff in there. So I said, damn, you know, he got to go put it on the counter and, you know, show everybody what he's getting. So as he going, I'm just looking at the places where he's picking stuff from. So there's one part he, <laughs> he picked up uh, some things from up here on my left side. And then he, he picked like a, quite a few of them down. I'm like, okay. He put them in the bag. So when I went by there and I looked up there I, and it said butt plugs. And I was like, hey, yo, <laughs> I, was, I was messing with him. Because people don't understand, you know, we was, we, we was like friends. He was a part of the same gang. So I'm still going to tease him. I'm still going to mess with him and everything like that. I could do that. It wasn't just no security thing. So I say, yo, what are you getting this for? <laughs> and it said butt plugs. And he was like, yo, yo, can I do my shopping by myself? I said, yeah, you could do it by yourself, brother. And he started walking and everything like that. And when he got to, I just waited at the counter. So when he got to the counter, he didn't even have to show the guy nothing. He just gave the guy a wad of money. I mean, I mean, like, he gave a, the guy a stack something like this. And Puff wasn't a dude to carry no 20s and no 50s or nothing like that. And I mean, like, he just said, boom. And we walked out the store. So we had to leave Atlanta and go to uh, North Carolina for a show. You understand? And um, it was him, this rapper, Sarah, and this other girl. We all got on a, G, a G, G5 jet, and we flew to, uh, G4 jet, and we flew to uh, uh, North Carolina. So, uh, later on that, I think that afternoon, same day, um, this rapper and him, they all in the room together. You know, it's Sarah, the girl, Puff, and, and this dude, this rapper. So uh, I'm here at the door and stuff like that. Like, yeah, so then next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We had the presidential suite where we was at. So I opened the door and uh, the dude said, yo, I'm here for my cousin. I said, who your cousin? And he said, uh, Ja Rule. I said, well, he busy right now. He said, oh, he busy doing what? I said, he with Puff, they're in the room, they busy, they don't want to be bothered. He said, well, I'm going in there. I said, bro, you ain't going in there because he told me they don't want nobody to be bothering him. And he was like, yo, I don't care, man. I'm going in there. That, that boot like that. I said, yo, bro, Jesus Christ had to come down here and take the air out of my body before you get in that room right there. Watch, watch. He tried to bum rush me. I grabbed him and threw him against the piano. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Ru runs out the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the naked. And so then uh, Ja was like, yo, what's going on? Yo, Gene, that's my cousin. He know me well. You know, uh, and Puff was like, yo, Gene, what happened? I said, he tried to get in the room. I told him he couldn't get in the room. And he was like, just look, Puff looked at Ja. He said, yo, Ja said, you ain't want to go in that room because there's a lot of freaking going on. 
<laughs> so I was like, oh, you said it was a lot of freaky going on. So that was basically that story, man. You know what I'm saying? They went back in the room. Dude felt a certain kind of way and he left out. So we, I seen them at the concert the next day and they tried to, you know, form up against me. But my man Frank was like, I told my man Frank, I was like, yo, Frank, put yourself in that position. Somebody trying to get in the room and Jai told you don't let nobody get in the room. What would you do? Now y'all could do whatever y'all want to do, man. But you know I ain't taking no losses. He said, yo, you good, you good, and that was it. Bruh, when, when Jai said, you don't want to come up in there, a lot of freaky stuff is going on. You got to use your mind. What they was doing with those butt plugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was wild. crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was real wild. <laughs> If there's one thing we can learn from this, it's that if you're a male rapper with a tough puff daddy meme and a gangster image, don't buy butt plugs in front of your bodyguard. It's crazy how they maintain those things on the hive for so long. Ha <laughs> masculinity and never missed it. Also in this lawsuit, this girl that was 17 at the time, she say that, you know, I guess her and Diddy was having relations and he couldn't get off. So he was complaining to her one time that, you know, he couldn't get off and for him to get off, she had to pinch his nipples real hard for him to get off. <laughs> I mean, yeah, man, this lawsuit is wild, man. She, 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 she should have had on white polish, fingernail polish. <laughs> no, man, we shouldn't be laughing about that, man, you know, because she is a victim. You know what I'm saying? She is a victim, man. And if this is her victim story, we got to be more... Um, I think more compassion. She was 17 years old at the time. She was fascinated by that whole sh by that whole thing, getting on a G4, G5 jet, you understand? And what was her parents, man? What was her daddy, her mama? They didn't miss their child? She didn't come home that night? I don't know, man. I can't fathom the whole idea, man. But it's crazy. When you hear about this stuff, right? Like the 17-year-old girl saying that, you know, Diddy, he couldn't get off unless she pinched his nipples real hard. And you got Cassie saying that, you know, he'll make her look up BBCs and, and he like to masturbate while she get babe by BBC. You're not surprised when you hear about this stuff, right? Bruh, I knew about the butt plug fetishes because I saw that with my own eye. I knew about him and Kim being swingers with other people, whether it was another male or another woman or a male and a woman together. I saw that with my own eye. You gotta realize is that after 2005, I didn't see anything that Puff was doing or what he didn't do. Puff had got addicted to opioid and being addicted to those things bring other drugs on i seen puff smoke a cigarette i never saw him smoke a cigarette he was on the beach smoking a cigarette on on youtube then i seen him you know uh smoking weed and drinking i was like that ain't the puff i know drinking like he was and doing all like that and so that ain't the puff that i knew you understand what i'm saying he you got to realize he had a certain respect around me because I was his OG from the same game. Do you understand? And he knew I was law enforcement. He knew I didn't play certain things. So he ain't gonna do what he do around other people in front of me because he knew I'm gonna check him on that. But what you trying to do? So to say that what he's being known for with Cassie I can only equate to some of the things that I've seen him and Kim go through. You understand what I'm saying? So people get mad, you know, but it is what it is. I can only equate his actions like that. Crazy, man. So all this stuff about him having fetishes is true. Oh, no doubt. Especially if he getting butt plugged in different flavors. 
But speaking of butt plugs, right, I remember some years ago, Cameron, he did an interview, and he told a story about how he went to Diddy House with mates, yeah. and he fought the dildo in the sink. I think I think that shit was crazy. I think that's, I think that shit was out of, and then May said that was Puffs. <laughs> I think he, I think he said, May said that was Puffs, but Mace was in the bathroom with it. I don't, I don't know what that was all about, man, but that shit was real weird to me. That shit was crazy. Crazy, man. But before we get off of that, right, I remember you told me a while ago that, you know, Mace, he used to live with Diddy, and he know a lot of stuff about Diddy that a lot of people don't know. Man, it's a lot of stuff that Mace or, and, and, and Usher know that they ain't telling about Diddy. There's a lot of stuff that they know. Can you imagine, bruh? Can you really imagine? What you mean by Usher, though? Usher used to stay with Diddy, too, when he was younger. What's up? Have you heard the latest bombshell word on the street that Usher is finally spilling the tea on his past with Diddy? And it's not pretty buckled up because this story is about to take a dark turn. Usher and Diddy were once tight like brothers, with Usher even living under Diddy's roof for a whole year, but behind closed doors, their relationship was far from a fairy tale. Looking at this lawsuit, right, Little Rod, he alleges that, you know, Diddy told him personally that he had sex with Usher. And when you look at the lawsuit, even though they got Usher name redacted, you could tell who it is because they described him as the guy that performed at the Super Bowl. Right. So, I mean, we all know who that is, but how you feel about that, man? Well, I, I mentioned that earlier that he said about Stevie J. The Usher part, that that's a touchy situation, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a certain feeling and I, I felt a certain way when Usher got on Shay Shay and I don't mean to mention other people's platforms, but he got on Shay Shay and he mentioned how great and how good Puff taught him and everything. You know what I'm saying? About the business, right? I know and people know that was around that in that time that Puff and Usher did have a situation. And that situation led Usher to the hospital. Now I let Usher explain that to y'all. I let Usher tell that story. But how dare you say a man that groomed you, you gonna give him a pass. Bro, you know, I know. Let me, re let, let me reframe you on something. Remember Usher, we was, at the Swiss Hotel, Puff was had Kim in the room, had one of Keith Sweat's baby mothers in the in in the uh, the big room outside the master bedroom. He came outside in his robe. He came outside in his robe. She gave him a fellatio right there. His back was turned to me. She gave him a fellatio. You knocked on the door. I came and opened the door for you. Puff went in the room. You came in the room and kissed that girl dead in the mouth. Now I'm telling that because you taking up for somebody that you know and a lot of more people know didn't do you right when you was at Diddy camp. Y'all put it together. And what you mean by Diddy camp? Remember, he was on um, one of the talk shows, the white guy with the curly hair, what's his name? Um, the white guy with the curly hair. And he said, yo, would you send your son to Diddy camp? And Usher said, no, no. Ask him why he won't send him to Diddy camp. But yet and still you praise him. Damn, man, and you said that, I know you can't go into detail, but you said that uh, it was a situation where Diddy sent him to the hospital? Let Usher explain that to you. Let Usher mama explain that to you. And the hospital was in Scarsdale, New York. 
Usher is now dropping bombs, accusing Diddy of grooming him and exposing him to a world no minor should ever see. The stakes are high as Usher opens up about the trauma he endured during his time with Diddy Brace. Watch yourself because the truth about their brotherhood is about to be unveiled and it's a cautionary tale that everyone needs to hear. Yeah, that is weird, man. I never knew about that, man. You never told me about that, man. But to get back to this lawsuit, right, Little Rod, he also alleges that, you know, Diddy, he will grope his genitals and he will grope his anus. My man, I didn't understand that one right now because his anus is your asshole. His genitals is his nut. So I guess he had to be naked when Puff was doing that. Where was he at? What was he doing? Because he said that they never had sex. If you read it in the thing, they never had sex. He made claims that they never had sex, but he, how would he grope your anus? Your asshole. How would he play with your genitals? Yeah, it don't make sense. I mean, it don't make sense. How you wake up butt the F naked with two other men in the bed with Diddy and nothing happened? I think he was just trying to save face, man. But do you think it's a possibility that he meant that, you know, Diddy will grope his, you know, butt? you know, instead of anus. I mean, cause I'm, I'm trying to figure out how does that work? You know, somebody groping your anus. You're gonna say your butt. He, he, the lawyer would say, what do you mean? He would say, my butt cheeks. There's a such thing called butt cheeks. Your two cheeks. He said anus. The anus is the asshole. How did he get that far? Lara, you gotta say no to Diddy sometimes. No, that shit ain't funny, man. <laughs> but you gotta say no. <laughs> so from you reading the lawsuit, right, you feel like he had relations with Diddy. When when me being a former investigator, I think Lil Rod was trying to save face on certain things that he had somewhat of a relationship or he was doing some things with Diddy that he didn't want to really come out in that front fashion because there's no way that he gonna wake up and his, his, his anus is hurting and his genitals is all over the place and he's in the bed after being drunk or drugged and saying nothing happened. And you think that Diddy gonna be in the bed with three other men and nothing happened? It doesn't sound logical. If we're reading and believing what he said in those papers, if you woke, woke up in bed and you was drunk or intoxicated on ecstasy, on whatever drugs that they put in there, roofied you or whatever, and you not, <laughs> and you not feeling right, something is wrong. Wouldn't you say? Something is wrong. He said, he didn't say, we woke up with all my clothes. He said, we woke up buck the F naked in those papers. Here as the story unfolds, Usher's bombshell allegations against Diddy are sending shockwaves through the entertainment. The word on the street is that Usher is finally spilling the tea on the dark side of his relationship with Diddy. And it's not for the faint of heart. Hold up because what Usher is revealing is straight up disturbing. According to Usher, the grooming started when he was just a 13 year old kid living under Diddy's roof. Yo, um, Justin, he's in. You ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. 
Usher. Uh, behind the scenes, Diddy was allegedly exposing Usher to a world no child should ever see, throwing him into the deep end of wild parties and inappropriate situations. We're talking about the infamous freak off party, where boundaries were crossed and lines were blurred. But the impact of these experiences on Usher's mental health is where the story takes a heartbreaking turn. The trauma he endured during his time with Diddy has left deep scars, leading Usher down a path of substance abuse as he tried to numb the pain. It's a cautionary tale of the long-lasting effects of grooming and the importance of protecting young artists in the industry. We uh, we um, we want to thank you. Come here. Don't don't sit on the bed at night. No homo. No, just just don't get close to the bed. Don't get close. But it's just like yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man. Man, you, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it. You did. No, no, no. I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting in the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just gonna. If we can, just let's let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not. I don't want my shot to even, like, I don't want it to come close to the bed at all. I, sh I should look like he fresh off a goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented. <laughs> but it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the off of the frosted place because he used to always get up early. And now he's one of the richest stars in the world. And I'm Yo, like, what, what the, the fuck, fuck did Puff, Puff just say? Good. Nobody's gonna acknowledge this for me. Puff just said we used to wrestle over the frosted flakes, and we're streaming live. That was stupid. Listen, that was fucking stupid. Listen, having a good time. Are you usher made it in the? Usher is bravely opening up about his struggles, revealing that he's had to seek therapy to deal with the aftermath of his time with Diddy. It's a raw and honest look at the dark side of fame and the price some pay for success. I moved to New York City and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> some... Flavor Camp? Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's In the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, uh, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't, <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All you know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige, they ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. And, I, and, what kind, and do you have money? What's <laughs> going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? Hell no. <laughs> See? Buckles up because Usher's story is a powerful reminder that even the brightest stars can be dimmed by the shadows of abuse as the allegations continue to unfold. The world is waiting with bated breath to see how Diddy will respond. Will he throw shade at Usher's claims or will he face the music and address the serious accusations head on? One thing's for sure this bombshell is far from over and the fallout is going to be intense, but Usher's story is just at the tip of the iceberg. Whispers are swirling that Diddy's alleged grooming behavior may extend beyond just Usher. When you look at the lawsuit, right, and you read all the things that Cassie is alleging and Diddy did to her, do you believe it? I go, it gotta be some truth to it because the nigga was quick to pay. I'm not paying a motherfucker shit. If I know I didn't do shit and it's just a rumor, I mean, we finna fight it. I'm not giving you a dime. I'm not finna pay a motherfucker no 20, 30 million just to shut up, just so people won't have, you know. No, I didn't do shit to you. I didn't make you do anything. So I'm not giving you shit. Motherfucker fork over some money quick. And I guess sometimes, uh, I guess you gotta be in a situation of, of uh, bad publicity. You know, motherfuckers feel like, well, let's just shut them up because we don't need bad publicity. I don't give a fuck. I'm not giving you no 30 million, 40, whatever, for some bad publicity. Cause I'm gonna fight you and I'm gonna prove that I didn't do a motherfucking thing. If you didn't. Now, if you know there's some kind of truth to that, then yeah, you're gonna want a motherfucker to shut up. So here, take this and shut the fuck up.
I don't know what you saying you saw or what I did, but if there's any inclination or small that there might be something, then yeah, you're going to pay. You're going to pay, and that's going to make you guilty as So that's what I said. A muff can't start saying Nick did some shit to me and then a week later you got a check in your bank in your mailbox. Mm-mm. Something was wrong. Nick Black Nick can blackmail you, say this, whatever. If you ain't this sh you gonna fight a muff. I don't care who it is. I'm gonna fight. I'm not just finna bow out because well they talking. No, I ain't do shit. And they could talk from here to high heaven, but no, we finna fight that. So if you turn around and go, well, sh yeah, I did some sh and it's some truth to what she's saying. And I don't even want people to know the the small sh I got, I'm going to pay her off. So, and I'm make her sign a paper saying you can never speak on this sh again. And so that, that, that if that, that's how it went down. Cause you know, she took her sh and, and bowed out gracefully. Thank you. But now, it, that's just going to make the other motherfuckers who feel like they got something to speak on. They going to start coming out the woodwork now. Oh, you paid a bitch off? Oh, Nick, let me get mine. Let me get mine. I don't give a I need a million. Fuck it, I need two million. Fuck it. Yeah, pay me off too. So, yeah, it's got to be some truth to her story. Because he damn show, you know, everybody else off oh, that. I didn't do anything. Oh, I'm because the rabbit hole goes even deeper with shocking revelations about other young artists who may have fallen victim to Diddy's influence. The plot thickens as a former bodyguard steps forward with a chilling account of a serious incident between Puff and Usher, hinting at the dangerous depths of their relationship. Hold up because the bombshell allegations against Diddy don't stop with Usher. The word on the street is that this may be just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Diddy's alleged pattern of exploiting young artists. Yourself because the tea is about to be spilled on some even more shocking revelations. Whispers are swirling that Diddy's grooming behavior may extend to other rising stars in the industry. Also in this lawsuit, this girl that was 17 at the time, she said that, you know, I guess her and Diddy was having relations and he couldn't get off. So he was complaining to her one time that, you know, he couldn't get off and for him to get off, she had to pinch his nipples real hard for him to get off. <laughs> I mean, he, yeah, man, this lawsuit is wild, man. She, 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 she should have had on white polish, fingernail polish. <laughs> No, man, we shouldn't be laughing about that, man, you know, because she is a victim. You know what I'm saying? She is a victim, man. And if this is her victim story, we got to be more, um, I think, more compassionate. She was 17 years old at the time. She was fascinated by that whole sh by that whole thing, getting on a G4, G5 jet, you understand? And what was her parents, man? What was her daddy, her mama? They didn't miss their child? She didn't come home that night? I don't know, man. I can't fathom the whole idea, man. But it's crazy. When you hear about this stuff, right? Like the 17 year old girl saying that, you know, Diddy, he couldn't get off unless she pinched his nipples real hard. And you got Cassie saying that, you know, he'll make her look up BBCs and, and he liked to masturbate while she get banged by BBC. You're not surprised when you hear about this stuff, right? Bruh, I knew about the butt plug fetishes because I saw that with my own eye. I knew about him and Kim being swingers with other people, whether it was another male or another woman or a male and a woman together, I saw that with my own eyes. You got to realize is that after 2005, I didn't see anything that Puff was doing or what he didn't do. Puff had got addicted to opioids and being addicted to those things bring other drugs on. I seen Puff smoke a cigarette. I never saw him smoke a cigarette. He was on the beach smoking a cigarette on on YouTube. Then I seen him, you know, uh, smoking weed and drinking. I was like, that ain't the Puff I know. 
drinking like he was and doing all like that. And so that ain't the puff that I knew. You understand what I'm saying? He, you got to realize he had a certain respect around me because I was his OG from the same game. Justin Bieber's name has been thrown into the mix with rumors that Diddy played a role in introducing him to a dangerous lifestyle of drugs and alcohol at a young age. It's a disturbing thought considering the impact it could have had on Bieber's formative years in the spotlight, but the plot thickens even further with a chilling account from a former bodyguard. This insider is dropping bombs about a serious incident that went down between Puff and Usher and allegedly landed Usher in the hospital. The details are being kept under wraps, but it hints at the dangerous depths of their relationship and the physical toll it may have taken on Usher. Things. So he ain't gonna do what he do around other people in front of me because he know I'm gonna check him on that. But what you trying to do? So to say that what he's being known for with Cassie I can only equate to some of the things that I've seen him and Kim go through. You understand what I'm saying? So people get mad, you know, but it is what it is. I can only equate his actions like that. Crazy, man. So all this stuff about him having fetishes is true. Oh, no doubt. Especially if he getting butt plugs in different flavors. <laughs> That's but speaking of butt plugs, right, I remember some years ago, Cameron, he did an interview and he told a story about how he went to Diddy House with mates yeah. and he fought the dildo in the sink. I think, I think that was crazy. I think that's, I think that was out of, and then May said that was puffs. <laughs> I think, he, I think he said, May said that was puffs, but Mace was in the bathroom with it. I don't, I don't know what that was all about, man, but that was real weird to me. That shit was crazy. Crazy, man. But before we get off of that, right, I remember you told me a while ago that, you know, Mace, he used to live with Diddy, and he know a lot of stuff about Diddy that a lot of people don't know. Man, it's a lot of stuff that Mace or, and, and, and us should know that they ain't telling about Diddy. It's a lot of stuff that they know. Can you imagine, bruh? Can you really imagine? What you mean by Usher, though? Usher used to stay with Diddy, too, when he was younger. As if the grooming the allegations weren't enough, the controversy surrounding Diddy is exploding with accusations of transmitting, herpes, and lawsuits are piling up, up with detailed accounts of encounters that allegedly led to the spread of the disease. It's a shocking twist that adds even more fuel to the fire of Diddy's tarnished reputation. The picture being painted is one of a powerful figure in the industry using his influence to manipulate and exploit young talent. It's a pattern that's a pattern that's all too familiar in the entertainment world. But Usher's bombshell is shining a starlight on the dark side of fame. Everyone's mind is just how deep this rabbit hole goes and who else may have fallen victim to Diddy's alleged abuse. The Usher story is a cautionary tale and a reminder of the vulnerability of young artists in an industry that often prioritizes profit over protection. It's a call to action for a reckoning within the entertainment world too. Hold those in power to hold them accountable for their actions and to create a safer environment for rising stars as the allegations continue to the pressure is on Diddy to address the serious accusations. Gene Deal, we gotta get right into it, man. Diddy, his house got raided. How you feel about that? Well, I think that the authorities came up with enough evidence to go into a judge by using the civil cases that has came upon him. So because they used the civil cases and found that there was some criminal activity that may have been found at some one of those people who like Cassie, Jonathan, no, Jonathan O didn't have a uh, civil case against him, but Cassie, Jonathan Odie, and Lil Rob, they used the evidence that they had or the statements they made and convinced the judge that there was enough uh, probable cause to go in there with a search warrant. But the way they did the search warrant and how they did it, man, I thought he was El Chapo or somebody. You know, they took a tactical team in there, brother. They had tactical units. You understand? And it was for allegedly a sex crime. But they took, yo, my man, you, did you see the artillery and the, the, the way the, the Homeland Security came in there? My man, you would have swore, you know, 
it was gonna be some gun violence up in that, how they came to it. So my feeling of it is, is that uh, enough statements have been made that they could probably prove. They did enough investigation. See, people think that, that when the federal government go in there on you, the reason they got a 99% uh, conviction rate because most people say, <laughs> They got me. They don't go to court with them. So for them to have a team in New York, because they didn't really mention too much about New York. They had property in New York, property in Miami, and a property in LA, all simultaneously hit. Those different agencies had to get together, plan that. And that's not no bull, it, it, you know, that's a lot of manpower, a lot of money. So. They want to know uh, how they spent the taxpayer. The taxpayer's going to know why you spending my money on this to come up with nothing. So you best believe they had something in the first place to go up in there, either through, like I said before, wiretaps. You understand? Because if they convinced the judge that they need a warrant, they had wiretaps, surveillance, Will he throw shade and deny any wrongdoing or will he face the music and take responsibility for his alleged actions the world is watching, waiting for the next bombshell to drop in this explosive storm? But amidst the chaos, one question lingers. What does Usher's silence say about his current relationship with Diddy? The cracks in their once tightened bond may be deeper than anyone realized. And different things that was going on. And then like, it's a lot of crazy statements that have been made. And you gotta look at that interview that uh, Jonathan Odie did, bruh. You know what I'm saying? That was probably more damaging than Cassie. And uh, that was more damaging than Cassie, because check this out. He said Diddy was transporting liquid cocaine on his private jet. Now, the DEA wasn't involved in this, It was the FBI and the Homeland Security, basically. That's because of the sex trafficking thing. But if they find any of that stuff in any one of his houses, there's a problem. Even if they find illegal guns, the Constitution or right goes the right to bear arms, but he got to have licenses for that. Shit. So if anybody got legal illegal guns up in there, if they find any kind of drugs to a certain, a high amount, cocaine and weed, I don't think Diddy gonna get charged because what he did, he put everything in his kid's name and his company. Did you see the video of his kids in handcuffs? Yeah, that's a tactical thing. The kids being in handcuffs is a tactical thing that law enforcement use, you understand? hoping that people who've never been in handcuffs before, that it either scares them or want to make them talk. There's no reason after they searched those kids because they didn't have a search warrant for bodies. They had a search warrant for like materials, laptops, telephones, uh, uh, logs, pictures, tapes, you know, that's what they search warrant is for. They didn't have a search warrant for bodies. So those kids, when they came out, they should have searched them. And then, yo, listen, y'all sit down right there. That was that was a that was a a, a, a a tactical move to get them to talk and to scare them into saying something, you know, by keeping them handcuffed like that. They didn't have to do those kids like that. None of those kids have that I know of criminal cases against them or known for criminal activity. So there was no reason for them to do that. If them was the damn Rockefellers or, or, or somebody else, they wouldn't have had their kids handcuffed like that. But you gotta realize they father. Hold up because the cracks in Usher and Diddy once. Tight knit bonds are starting to show as the bombshell allegations against Diddy continue to explode. One thing is becoming crystal clear, Usher is nowhere to be seen in Diddy's corner. 
The silence is deafening and it speaks volumes about the fractured state of their relationship on the street is due to Usher's lack of public support for Diddy. Amidst the scandal, raising eyebrows off painted a crazy picture to the authorities. You understand? It's a crazy picture and people don't realize this, brother. First and foremost, Puff has been dodging the legal system for years. His affiliation with BMF, even though Meech has said that Puff never did anything, Puff never been around her, they still was partying together. So in the authorities' mind, they feel like Puff knew what Meech was doing. Then with the introduction to Jacob and different people, and a lot of people going to jail for money laundry and stuff like that, Puff being, um, and this is documented, Puff being a CI for an FBI agent. I said this years ago that Kim and Kirk Burroughs took some paperwork. They was taking some papers up to the to the uh, uh, FBI and stuff like when they was here in New York. They was taking paperwork up there and stuff like that. Don't know what it was, but later on found out that he was a CI. You understand? Now, what happens? He don't have that. The guy probably, that was 20, 30 years, 20 some years ago. The guy probably retired. Puff ain't dealing with him. No, he didn't pass Puff on or something like that. So now, Puff been dodging the legal system with the, uh, uh, people had it wrong. They think it was with the Black Mafia family. No, it was with Butt Naked. I said this years ago. The person that he said is a senior advisor, Corey Jacobs. Corey had nine 16 of life sentences for drug trafficking. You make him your senior advisor, even though that was your man, he coming home. That's your man, pots and pots and pans. But Wolf was the one who took care of them when they was away. You know what I'm saying? Wolf was the one who took care of them. So now, you got all these, you know, these characters, you know, around you. What they gonna come, what they gonna think when they come to your house? They got the evidence or they had statements that you blew up Kid Cuddy's car. You understand what I'm saying? They, they have statements that, you know, you may have been affiliated with people being shot. So they come to your house like this. They treat your kids like this. Based on the pictures you have played to the authorities. So them having his kids like that, I think that was wrong. After they searched those kids, make sure they didn't have no weapons on them sit them down on the ground, make them feel comfortable, because at this time, they're not criminals. They, they, haven't, they haven't committed any crimes. I see, I see. Speaking of drugs, right, because you made a comment. All these two were once closer than brothers with a history that runs deep. But now that Diddy faces the heat of serious accusations, Usher is keeping his distance. It's a telling sign of the strain that the alleged abuse has put on their bond. The dynamic between Usher and Diddy is a complex one shaped by years. of living under the same roof and navigating the cutthroat music industry together, but the revelations of alleged grooming and exploitation have cast a dark shadow over their shared past. It's a painful reality that Usher is likely grappling with as he comes to terms with the trauma he endured at a young age buckle up because the consequences for Diddy could be catastrophic if these allegations are proven true. The industry is watching closely, waiting to see how this scandal will unfold. Will Diddy face the music and take responsibility for his alleged actions, or will he throw shade and deny any wrongdoing? Jada Pinkett and Will Smith, you told me before that she was at a party before that they attended, and you said the party was weird. Tell me about that. Okay, uh, this is Boxer. His name's Twine, he's from our neighborhood. He, he was married to uh, Tanisha Arnold. So the bra played Pam on uh, Martin Lawrence. We went to the party with her. I mean, it was a matter of fact, it was a set it off party. Jada Pickett, Pippa Capaz, all of them was there. You know what I'm saying? It was just, uh, seemed like Puff, 
and Tupac was like a couple, it seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on, you know what I'm saying? The vibes ain't there. I guess that, that's what Tupac was talking about, the Illuminati and shit. It's like Vivica Fox was with this big gay man. He was 6'9". They called him, his name 6'9". He had the red hair with a big old booty and shit. Nobody was gay no more. What the fuck is going on here? It's just a lot of, a lot of weird shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? That shit, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's what Tupac, I guess he wanted to get up out of the Illuminati or something. But I, I seen it yeah, Matter of fact, MC Light pulled off with Tanisha Arnold. You know what I'm saying? In her brand new 560. Black one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that shit weird, dude. Yeah, that's some weird ass shit going on, you know? Yeah. And what was Tupac doing at the party, yo? Him and Puff was there together. It was there, you know what I'm saying? That's why I don't know how they fucking fell out or nothing like that. They was road dogs. You know what I'm saying? They ain't even got pictures of him. He got on that uh uh that blue sweater with the turtleneck. Him and him hugged up like this with the black hat. Have you ever seen that picture? No, I don't recall, but I'm pretty sure I came across it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That picture there that they was at that party that day. Yeah, it's just like a bunch of weird shit, that whole fucking yeah, that shit weird, dude. Yeah, bunch of, uh, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not no gay bastard or nothing. I mean, none of that shit, but that shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? That shit, that whole party was weird old out. Yeah, and it was Jaden Pickett. But. You saying that, you saying the whole party was weird. What did you see at the party that made it weird? I mean, I'm confused. I guess it was the Illuminati. It's just weird. I know I wouldn't want to be part of no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from the old school, dude, and uh... The stakes are high and the fallout could be massive, but beyond just Diddy, this scandal is forcing a reckoning within the entertainment world. It's shining a harsh light on the power dynamics at play, where influential figures can abuse their positions and exploit vulnerable young talent. Usher's story is a wake-up call and a demand for change and accountability in an industry. That has long turned a blind eye to such abuses. As the details continue to unfold, the question on everyone's mind is whether Usher and Diddy's relationship can ever be repaired, the wounds run deep and the trust has been shattered. It's a cautionary tale of the dangers of unchecked power and the long-lasting impact of trauma. But amidst the chaos, there's a glimmer of hope. With my generation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hate crime, yes, but it's more tolerated these days and nothing like that. It's more, you know what I'm saying, more open now, you know what I'm saying? But back then it was kind of fishy, you know what I'm saying? Still kind of fishy. You know, but it's more, you know, out there now. The incident y'all had with Warren G and Kid Frost. Tell me about that, my man. Okay, Kid Frost had gave a, a party at the House of Blues. One of our big homeboys wanted to go with us. You know what I'm saying? So he went with us and we, he said, ooh, you young niggas have fun. So one of uh, Kid Frost's homies still on my big homie. But he didn't know that he was around, uh, it was maybe about 20 of us. So we, the dude that uh, socked my big homie, we beat the dog shit out of him. So my big homie, he came too. He, uh, he like, that's the motherfucker? We like, yeah. And it was two security guards had him. Had, uh, had the dude that we beat up from Kid Frost Entourage. So uh, my big homie knocked that motherfucker out while the yellow jack, you know, the yellow jackets with the event security, they had to do. So my homie still knocked him out. Boom! So the, the dude with the uh, yellow jacket was talking shit. Man, what the fuck is wrong with him? My homeboy knocked out him too. Bam! Like, ooh! So the other one like, man, he got back. The little Jamaican dude come up talking shit. Man, are you going crazy? My homeboy sock him too. So we went down to get our car for valet, and it was the dude, it's LBC. And he like, what the fuck is that? And he's like, it's Long Beach City Crip. So my homeboy knew this dude was an imposter. He, if you're from Long Beach, you're gonna say Roller Twenties or Insane, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna say you're a real uh, block boy, you know what I'm saying? 19th Street, you're gonna say something. A real Crip said, this nigga say he's from Long Beach City Crip. My homeboy like, wait a minute. Knocked him out too. So uh, 
One of GM was down there, him and said to the pilots waiting on their cars. And they I get they seen my homeboy get busy like that, so they so uh, they had left before us, went up to Fat Burgers. So we came, got in our shit, they finally brought our cars to ballet. We went up to Fat Burgers. And one of the years, so Cedric Tabalas was up there already, you know, eating their shit and shit. So we came in there, the big homie like, uh, hey, motherfucker. He pointed at Cedric Tabalas, like, man, you've been dumping us for years, mother. I'm losing all my motherfucking money betting on your motherfucking ass. So uh, Warren G was right there, he like, my homie like, man, that's a nice ass watch. So uh, he like, uh, man, let me try that on, you know what I'm saying? Usher's bravery in coming forward and sharing his truth is a powerful act of resilience. It's a reminder that even in the face of unimaginable pain, there is strength in speaking out and holding abusers accountable. Accountable as the world watches this scandal unfold. One thing is certain reckoning has begun the entertainment. Industry is being forced to confront its demons and take a hard look at the systems that have allowed such abuses to thrive. It's a defining moment, a chance for real change, and a safer future for young artists chasing their dreams. Usher the story is a rallying cry and a call to action for anyone who has ever been victimized by those in power. It's a reminder that no one is alone in their struggles and there is always hope for healing and justice. Buckle up because this, the bombshell is far from over and the impact will be felt for years to come because Usher's story is a cautionary tale that we can't ignore. It's a stark reminder of the dark side of the music industry where power can be abused and young talents can be exploited. Buckle up because this bombshell is forcing us to take a hard look at the systems that have allowed such abuses to thrive. Word on the street is that Usher's bravery in coming forward is just the beginning. It's a rallying cry for change and a demand for accountability from those who have used their influence to manipulate and harm. The Usher story is a wake-up call and a reminder that we need to do better in protecting the vulnerable and holding abusers responsible for their actions as we reflect on the gravity of Usher's experiences. It's crucial that we critically examine the power dynamics that play in the entertainment world. Can't turn a blind eye to the exploitation of young artists chasing their dreams. It's time to spill the tea. On the dark underbelly of the industry and work towards creating a safer environment for all. Usher's story is a powerful reminder that no one should have to endure the trauma of grooming and abuse. It's a call to action. For us to stand up, speak out, and demand change, buckle up because this is just the beginning of a reckoning that is long overdue. Let Usher bravery be the spark that ignites a movement towards justice and healing in the music industry and beyond.